G'day everyone, my name is Bruce Smith and welcome to another edition of In Nature's Realm. Now um, today I'm off to the Rubicon River. Um, it's early January and uh, what we can expect today is grasshoppers and also willow grubs. And um, you can get some really good uh, fly fishing uh, when these uh, two food items are about. Um, but before I uh, show you any of the footage from today, I want to show you this footage that I've collected, uh, you know, over over the uh, last probably 12 to 18 months. And this footage uh, really shows you what the Rubicon's like. Um, it's great for beginners and even for experienced fishermen. And uh, you know, you know, persevere with it because there's one section there where I filmed trout actually feeding. Uh, we hid the camera and uh, we uh, fished for these trout that were rising and uh, it's great footage, it really is. Uh, not successful, but just amazing uh, footage. You've just got to watch it and uh, persevere with its, uh, you know, the amount of time it takes or the amount of footage that I've got on it. But there's little bits and pieces in there and I've got a little bit I had to talk over explaining uh, everything that happened on uh, these days so have a look at this footage see what you think and uh yeah learn a bit about the rubicon river see you soon The Rubicon River can be found within the northeast of Victoria, starting its journey within the Royston Ranges, winding its way down through lush farmland and entering the Goulburn River below Gilmore's Bridge. As can be seen, the river is bordered by thick high tussock grass. Within this tussock grass are numerous numbers of grasshoppers that get blown into the river. Also numerous along the river are willow trees and at the same time in summer willow grubs can be found also falling into the stream. Good imitations of both grasshoppers and willow grubs are essential for success on this river. The river is fished by many people and fly fishing is no exception. Fly fishermen will find that within the river there are trout that range from around about a pound up to four pound and not uncommon a five and six pound trout. Now to fish the Rubicon to be successful, you need to cast your fly to a prime lie. The prime lie will be found by casting your imitation to the main flow or where the flow is channeling all food along the river. Casting upstream and letting your fly drift drag free is also essential. Obviously, casting to the edge of the river is also a successful tactic, but again, we need to make sure that the fly will drift naturally. Now, in this next cast, we will see the splat of the actual fly, and we can see it is drifting naturally with no drag. To achieve a drag free drift, and this is of good note for beginners, is to make sure we constantly mend the line. As can be seen in this footage, the stream has different sections of fast flow and also slow. The water flow along the edges is slow, where the outside 
is fast. So this will pull on the fly line and create a drag to our fly. Working also the fly from the edge out to the main flow will cover all options of drifting our fly. As we can see, casting out and constantly mending the line is the order of the day. In this section of the Rubicon River, we came across a nice trout feeding on some unseen insect. I was fishing to the right of the screen and my fishing partners were just behind the lower section of the camera and they were spotting for me. Now as can be seen in this footage, this trout, which we thought was the only trout uh, in this section, uh, we later found out there was actually three trout in this section. But this one trout in particular would come out from his cover of shadow and then make his way towards the main flow of the river looking up for any food items that may have been available and there were food items there's no two ways about that drifting past every so often we'll actually see this trout make his way back to the shadow then he'll come back and then take an insect off the surface. Here he goes, swimming back to his cover. And he'll come He's a nice trout, possibly two, three pounds. Okay, now the trout will come out from his cover and he will take an insect off the surface. There he goes, it's coming up and he took it. Now as can be seen, this food item was very small. At the time, I had a grasshopper fly on, which was very successful for me in um, previous fishing spots. So I persevered with the actual grasshopper fly. So at this stage, I was tying my fly onto my leader and continually watching the movement of this trout. Okay, I now decide to present my fly to the trout. There's the first cast. It was a little short, so I waited for the fly to 
to drift out of here and then decided to recast. There it is. Trout sees the fly. He follows it. He's just about to take it. No. He rejects it. So that told me straight away to put on another fly and the fly obviously that I should have put on was a willow grub. But unfortunately in my retrieval of the fly I got it snagged in some bushes and I'm tangled up. And I spent most of my time, valuable time, trying to untangle this fly from the bushes. But as we can see, the trout continues to feed. Just taking a small item of food off the surface from the main fly. And we can see the trout again making his way out to the main flow, watching out for any food that might be drifting past. But then we see another trout. And we realise then that there was two trout within this section of the river king. which really surprised us. These trout were using the shade just in the lower section as cover. And the more I look at this trout, the more I can see that I think he's bigger. And uh, he could possibly be around three maybe even four pound in size or weight and uh, he was constantly on the move and this is something that there he goes he rose again to another insect and this is what we need to realize is that trout have a feeding pattern some trout will in a stream will go down to the say if they're in a pool They'll go to the bottom of the pool and then take all the insects as they go back upstream towards the top of the pool. This trout is doing a circle, constantly going out and then going back. And it's when they go back or are just slowly starting to go to the main flow of the stream to cast your fly. As I did, but he rejected it. Again, the trout comes out into the main fire. Now, if you look in the shadow, just see another trout there. And this trout's coming back. And there you saw two trout, possibly three, get spooked. And when they're spooked, it's all over and done with. So, that's a few tips and hints on fishing the Rubicon River. Get out there this summer. You're going to love it. Talk to you soon.